day that the Lord has made, and we just thank God it's a happy day. It's a happy day. God blessed us to wake up this morning and to see another day. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty Amen. God we serve. Angels bow before him, ladies and gentlemen. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Now, we're not going to let the angels out-praise the Lord, uh, out-praise us. We're going to give our praise to the Lord. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. The whole, All of nature adores God and worships God. God created the heavens and the earth. The oceans worship him. Even the tornadoes worship him, the cyclones, the winds, the trees, the birds, the bees, the snakes, the bears, the moose or the meeses, and the mice, and the, the lions and the tigers. Everything that God has made worships him. He made everything to worship him. Amen. Praise God. It is Satan who has corrupted the universe, corrupted the world, corrupted nature, corrupted people, because Satan does not want people or nature worshiping God. All creation worships God. The scripture says the heavens declare his handiwork. When you look up in the sky, and like I can look out my window now down here in Lithonia, Georgia, blue skies green trees the sun is shining praise god the animals are out on the lake the turtles and the even beavers we've got beavers down here in georgia snakes too praise god hallelujah i haven't seen any crocodiles i don't want to see any of them or alligators praise god but we just bless god and god wants you to worship him he wants you to take your mind off any problem any situation and worship him praise god even when megan even when the trees and the uh, the flora and the fauna uh catch fire and and nature uh experiences a, a forest fire even in that god is going to be glorified we're going to pray later on for those people in the western part of the nation who are experiencing forest fires, but we want you to know that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is worthy to be praised and he created, created us to worship him. Psalm 139.14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made so that I may worship him. If you ever, ever, ever get down in the dumps and say, oh, nobody cares about me. Everybody's forgotten about me. God, why did you <laughs> place me here on planet Earth? Ladies and gentlemen, you need to turn to Psalm 139.14 and get it in your spirit. Read it, read it, read it, and then pray in tongues over that scripture. Get a magnification Amen. of the Lord through that scripture, and you'll realize, you'll realize that God is true. He made you fearfully and wonderfully so that you can praise him and worship him. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a purpose. God did not just let you be born and, did, and walk away from you. He did not abandon you. Hallelujah. You have a purpose. And so we come to you today in the name of Jesus at the online church brought to you by Back to Basics Ministries, a powerful online church where we preach Christ Jesus and we give God the glory and we welcome you. I want to thank you for taking time out to come and worship God along with me as together as we touch and agree, we magnify God, we lift up the name of Jesus, we declare this to be a happy day, oh happy day, and we look back on the day when Jesus washed our sins away. Don't ever forget the day that Jesus washed your sins away. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. You were fearfully and wonderfully made and bless God. We praise God. We just thank God in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. I want to welcome uh, my wife, Jackie, uh, from, and she's in Augusta, Georgia today. Welcome, Jackie. Uh, Wrong, Jackie. Wrong, Jackie. Hey, Jackie Fisher. Jackie Fisher. I thought it was Jackie Carter coming on from, from Augusta, Georgia. Jackie Fisher, welcome. Praise God. We just think, ladies and gentlemen, this series that we're teaching on, uh, 
on the gifts of the Holy Spirit is life-changing. God is revolutionizing lives. He's changing lives. I believe he's changing your life. It is not because of who we are or what we've done or how many degrees we have or what kind of job we have, how much money we have or what people think about us. It is the Holy Spirit in us that is helping us Amen. to do great things for the Lord. And so we praise God. We bless God. We honor God with our whole heart. We worship the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the online church. Today I'm going to be ministering on the subject, the gift of tongues, part two. The gift of tongues, part two. This is part two of a three-part series. We're going to have a little bit of review on part one and a little bit of review uh, of the gifts of the Spirit. Then we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes of this lesson. And I guarantee you in the name of Jesus that your life is going to be changed. If you will listen to this message, if you will internalize it, if you'll put your eyes on Jesus, not on mankind, not on your situation, not on your circumstances, if you take your mind, even if your body's racked in pain, you're going through difficulties. Praise God, Sylvia Curtis, even though your body may be still racked in pain, you put your mind on Jesus and watch what the Lord is going to do to you today. We're believing God today, ladies and gentlemen, hey, for signs and wonders and miracles. We're believing God for healings. We're getting testimonies of healings through this ministry, this online Amen. ministry that the Holy Spirit is healing. He's delivering. He's breaking yokes. He is setting free. And so we're going to uh, um, call on the name of the Lord. We're going to enter into prayer at this time. And then we're going to have our message. And then after the message, we want you to, you to stay on. Uh, Megan, we're going to pray for those victims of the forest fires. And we're going to pray for other things. And we're going to believe God. God, when we pray, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we, he, we know that we have the petitions that he desires of us. So I want you to stay online. Stay tuned. Now I want you to mute your phones. Everybody, mute your phones. If you don't know how to do that, star six. Press star six, and then uh, I'm going to pray. Then we're going to go into our message, and after the message, we want to stay on, and we want, we want to do some personal ministry. We want to minister to your needs. We want to seek God for your needs. We want to ask the Holy Spirit to do a mighty work in your life. There is nothing impossible for God. So with this expectation, and our hope is in Jesus, with this expectation, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you and honor you and praise you, worship you and adore you. Lord God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for people who are online, live with us, God. We thank you for those in other nations who are online, live with us. We thank you for those who, who will hear the tape, listen to the tape. Let the anointing be on the tape also, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We come before you. We humble ourselves before you, Father. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity and all unrighteousness, create in each of us a clean heart, give us a teachable spirit. Now, Lord, do what you know how to do. All things exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We trust in you. Rebuke the devourer, God. Cast down all vain imaginations. Bind the enemy, Lord God. Don't let the enemy hinder this message or hinder the blessings you have for your people. Bless each and every one and their families, Lord. And Lord, if there be any who are not saved, who are listening uh, to this program, who are listening to the tape, if they're not saved, help them, Lord, to realize that salvation is real, it is free, and that you are coming back soon. So help them to get saved today by asking Jesus Christ into their lives. Then after they get saved, Lord, Ask them to uh, help them to ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, help them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the gifts of the Spirit. We ask these things, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to look at two passages of, passages of Scripture as we look at our subject today, the gift of tongues. Part 2, 
the gift of tongues, part two. God's going to change some lives today. There are some of you online, uh, you have not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have not received the gift of tongues. Some of you have been taught improperly. Some of you have been messed up by man's teachings. But we're going to look at tongues today, and we're going to look at uh, the Holy Ghost and how he uses tongues, and we're going, to, we're going to take the weight off a lot of you today by lifting the veil and asking the Lord to take the weight off you. Some of you have been struggling with sickness. Some of you have been struggling with finances. Some of you have been struggling with family members. The Lord's going to take the weight off you today. Praise God. So it is very important. It is utmost of utmost importance that you learn about the gift of tongues and how to praise God in tongues and how to pray in tongues and how to speak in tongues. This is one of the most powerful weapons God has given to the church. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people in the church who do not utilize this weapon. Many, ladies and gentlemen, are stuck on what uh, 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 Mama said or Grandmama said or Uncle Willie said or, or Cousin James said, and they were in error. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but through me. Jesus wants to give us revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit wants to give us revelation knowledge. So as we go through this message today, I'm expecting your life to be changed. I'm, going, I'm expecting that you tongue talkers out there are going to be edified. You're going to be strengthened. That you're going to use your gift more often. That you're going to use your gift on a daily basis. You're going to be, you're going to be ladies and gentlemen, world changers. I declare and decree that you will be world changers by the power of the Holy Ghost in you and by the name of Jesus. You're going to be world changers in these last and evil days as we take the gift of God to people, the, the word, the gospel, the love of Jesus Christ, not just in preaching, ladies and gentlemen, but in what we do and say. What we do and say, ladies and gentlemen, you and I might be the only Jesus people in this world will ever see. And so we want to walk in wisdom. We want to walk in power. We want to walk in love. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in my sanctified heart that this message is going to change a lot of lives. Praise God. Those of you listening to the tape, Expect God. Expect God to move. Play this tape over and over again. Expect God to move in your life. He wants you to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to stop struggling by yourself. He wants you to partner with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to yield your spirit to the Holy Ghost. He wants to create change. And he cannot do that unless you allow him. So let the Holy Spirit come in. Seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Let's put to rest those uh erroneous things that people have been teaching about tongues. Let's put to rest uh, some of those things that denomination, denominations have used to put down the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want you and I don't want me to be accused of blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't know, there are times we need to just be quiet and not say anything. Don't don't proceed in saying those ignorant things that we have been taught. If you want to know, seek the Lord while he may be found. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have been born again, you can seek the Lord for yourself. You can seek the truth. And one of the best ways to get the truth is to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and to get and utilize the gift of tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk today about one of the most powerful gifts God has given to the church. You may say, okay, okay, Pastor, you said that before. Let's move on. Give it, give it to me. I want it. Well, the Holy Spirit wants to give it to you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This scripture, we read it over and over again from the time we were children. But this scripture leaps out, ladies and gentlemen. This scripture leaps out. 
This scripture leaps off the pages. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass and or a tinkling cymbal. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love or charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. This scripture lets us know that even though we may speak in 18 different languages, you may have two PhD degrees, you may be a linguistics teacher, you can speak in other tongues language-wise, and, and, and uh, you can speak in the language of the angels, you can speak in your heavenly language, you can see. Mute your phones, please. Mute your phones. Star six. You can speak in a heavenly language. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible declares the words jump out. If you don't have love in your heart, if you don't have charity, you are just a noisemaker. You're wasting time. You're wasting people's time. You're wasting your words. You're wasting your energy. If I speak with the tongues of men. If I speak Russian and Chinese and English and Spanish and French and German and all the other languages, ladies and gentlemen, but if I don't have love in my heart, love for God and love for mankind, I am just a noise maker. There's, there are a whole lot of people in the church making noise. There are a lot of them in the pulpit right now at the 11 o'clock hour Eastern time in the USA. They're in the pulpit. They're preaching right now. They're making noise. They're trying to uh, magnify themselves. They're trying to impress people with their flowery words. They're trying to impress people with their abilities, with the way they dress, with their good looks. Ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 a thousand times no. If I speak with the tongues of men, even if I go to Harvard University, if I go to uh, Oxford University, if I'm a Rhodes Scholar, ladies and gentlemen, if I've got a string of PhDs and 19,000 letters after my name, if I don't have love, I'm just a noisemaker. I'm wasting time. I'm in God's way. I need to repent, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says I'm just a tinkling cymbal. I am sounding brass. That is nothing like but blowing a horn without any notes. You're flat. You're, you're off key. Uh, you don't know the, what you're saying, what you're blowing. Uh, trust in the Lord. The Bible says, and though I have the gift of prophecy, listen to this, prophets, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Though I give that prophetic word, I've got millions of followers. I've got a million likes on Facebook. I'm all over the YouTube. I'm all over the Internet. I've got a church of 20,000 people. I'm, uh, I'm a prophet of God. I speak what thus saith the Lord. But if I don't do it with love in my heart, I am nothing, ladies and gentlemen, nothing. <coughs> Or as we used to say in Chester, Pennsylvania, I am nothing, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a noisemaker. The scripture says that, verse 2, I am nothing if I don't use these gifts in love. Ladies and gentlemen, God gives gifts to his people. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to his people. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to the body of Christ as he sees fit as he desires. Ladies and gentlemen, do not become jealous if someone has a gift and that gift is in operation and you don't have that gift. Stir up the gifts that God has given you. Use what God has given you. When you use what God has given you, he will trust you with more gifts. Perhaps your gift is not tongues. Everybody does not speak in tongues. We're going to preach today about speaking in tongues and what happens when we speak in tongues and the benefits of speaking in tongues. But everybody does not speak in tongues. But don't be concerned about that. Don't you worry about it. If you don't speak in tongues, you may be a prophet. You may speak in prophecy. Or you might have the word of knowledge when people want to know what's going on. What's going on? You can give them the word of God. It's called the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge will tell them what's going on. And after 
You give them the word of knowledge, and they say, well, what shall I do? What shall I do? You can pray for them, or they can pray for themselves, and God will give them a word of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, and the word of wisdom will show them what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going through difficulty and you need help, God can give you the gift of faith, ladies and gentlemen. God can give you, if you're sick in your body, he'll give you the gift of healing. Or if your mama's sick, or your brother's sick, or your children are sick, or your neighbor is sick, God can give you the gift of healing. God can send you to your neighbor, ladies and gentlemen. You can lay hands on them in the name of Jesus, and they will be healed. We're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about opening our spirit, our hearts up, to receive the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. God does not want you to be just a church attender, someone to go to church, sit, take notes, and go home, and there's nothing changed in your life. God has power for you, ladies and gentlemen. He has gifts for you. I believe this message is going to help somebody. God can change your circumstances. Why go to church uh, angry and come home angry? Why go to church puffed up in pride and come home there's no change? Why go to church meeting a mountain of issues and coming home uh, with more issues? Why go to church mean and angry with someone coming back the same way? Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Holy Ghost who wants to change you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know people, they're still mean after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They still are mean-spirited. They still cuss. They still talk down on people. They still put people down. They have nothing positive to say. Ladies and gentlemen, some of them are deacons in the churches. Some of them are trustees and stewards in the churches, yes. And some of these sad people are preachers of the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going through the motions. They're going through the motions. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have much time to get this thing right. Jesus is ready to crack through the sky. So ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you are in life today, no matter what's happening in your life, you can receive the power of God and the rest of your life can be a joy, a joy ride. Hallelujah. You can experience the power of God. I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody who thinks, oh, there's nothing worth living for. There's nothing worth living for. Ladies and gentlemen, I talked to a friend of mine. He's in his upper 70s. I talked to him yesterday. He's a kidney dialysis patient. I asked him, are you qualified for a kidney transplant? No, I don't want it, he said. I'd rather some younger person get it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, no, 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 all contraire. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to stay in this life as long as I can uh, to help somebody. I want more time to help somebody. I want the Holy Spirit to work in me, to live in me. I want to love people through the Holy Spirit. I want God to bless me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting late in the evening. So many senior citizens have shut down on God. So many young people have shut down down on God. So many people have met walls of frustration. Satan has frustrated you, and you think there's nothing left for you to do. I know people 19, 20 years old uh, who don't uh, have any hope, people in their 20s who have given up, people who want to commit suicide. No, 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 don't take those drugs. Don't take those opioids. Put that gun down. Put that knife down. Don't drink that poison. There is hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, this is good preaching. It's from the Holy Ghost. I know it's good preaching. It's going to change somebody's life. It's not because of me, but it's because of God. God can speak through a jackass, and people get saved. I've been called a jackass on many occasions, but whether or not I'm a jackass or a person, listen to the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to sit there and be sick for the rest of your life. You don't have to be there and suffer pain for the rest of your life. You don't have to be there and be frustrated in your marriage. You don't have to be there and not speak to your husband or not speak to your wife. God can change things. 
if you'll let the Holy Ghost come in and take over. We used to say years ago, move over, let the Holy Ghost take over. I say move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. Ladies and gentlemen, God said in his word, he promised us, he promised us he would take over. He said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. That's a promise, ladies and gentlemen. Move over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Move over. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, you don't know how big my problem is. <clears throat> Move over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. There's no problem that God cannot solve. He's bigger than any problem you can ever encounter. Well, Pastor, you don't know how sick I am. You don't know what the doctor said. Move over. Let Dr. Jesus take over. Move over. Let Dr. Jesus take over. One word from the Lord and you can be healed. One word, ladies and gentlemen. There was a woman who had an issue of blood. She bled. She bled. That cancer caused her, caused her to bleed for 18 years. Doctors couldn't help her. Medical science couldn't help her. But she said, if I can just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I hear that Jesus is coming to town. If I can just touch his garment, I will be healed. Ladies and gentlemen, she touched the garment, the garment of Jesus, and Jesus felt power leave him. Holy Ghost power, healing power. Jesus healed her. She touched by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, you can touch God by faith. You can touch God by faith. So many of you, so many of you are denying the power of God because you have been misinformed about the Holy Ghost. You have been deceived by the devil about the Holy Ghost. The devil hates the Holy Ghost. The devil hates the gift of tongues. The devil hates it when you speak in tongues. The devil fights tongues. The devil has preachers and pastors saying, don't bring tongues into this church. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst thing any preacher can say, any pastor can say is, don't bring that Holy Ghost here. Don't bring that stuff here. Ladies and gentlemen, do not blaspheme the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. He is the power of God. He's the one Jesus said, I will send to help you. He's the comforter. Jesus said to his disciples, it is expedient that I must go away. I must go away, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you with power, without power. Do you hear what the Lord is saying to you, ladies and gentlemen? He will not leave you without power. He said, I will send the comforter, the Holy Ghost. Jesus told his disciples uh, before he ascended into heaven, he said, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry. Wait. Don't just sit around doing nothing. Worship God. Worship God. Praise God. Praise God. And God will send you the promise. He will send you the promise. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to me today, you can receive the promise. And if you receive the promise and, and, and you've backslidden or your life has uh, grown cold or you're like in the valley of dry bones, you can get the fire of the Holy Ghost. You can get fired up. You can get fired up. Get fired up. Get fired up. Get fired up. Move over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. We're talking about the most, one of the most powerful gifts God has given to his people. God has given us the spirit of knowledge. He's given us the spirit of wisdom. He's given us the spirit of prophecy. He's given us the spirit of faith. He's given us the gift of tongues. He's given us the, the uh, um, he's given us the interpretation of tongues. He's given us so many gifts healings and miracles. Ladies and gentlemen, don't just sit there and let the devil kick you around. Ladies and gentlemen, get with Jesus. Get the Holy Ghost. Partner with the Holy Ghost. Watch how he will turn your situation around. He, he will turn your situation around. Jesus didn't have to speak a word to that woman with the issue of blood, and she was healed. Jesus is a healer. He is a healer. He's no respecter of persons. He will heal you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking today. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the gift of tongues. 
one of the most powerful gifts God has given to the church. Yet, on the other hand, it is one of the most controversial gifts. Praise God, it's one of the most controversial gifts because men deny God the power. They doubt God. Ladies and gentlemen, so many denominations don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so many people claim to be ministers and they don't know Jesus. Pray, ladies and gentlemen, I read on uh, Facebook yesterday uh, one of my, a friend of mine, a former student of mine from high school. Ladies and gentlemen, he now has a license to marry someone. He put his gift, his certificate of ministry online yesterday, and I saw where it was from, ladies and gentlemen, and from a cult, from a, 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 a church that doesn't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They don't even believe in Jesus, but he calls himself a minister. How sad, how sad. What is sadder than that? The number of people who are complimenting him and congratulating on him on getting his uh, 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 ordination papers. Ladies and gentlemen, only the Holy Ghost can ordain somebody. Only the Holy Ghost can ordain somebody. You might have ordination papers, a whole wall full of them, but if you don't have Jesus as your Savior and Lord, and you not, do not worship the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you may as, may as well throw those papers, along with their frames, in the fire and burn them. They don't mean a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. And when you're born again, you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to live in you. Ladies and gentlemen, why, why, why are people denying the Holy Spirit? Why are people trying to go through this life without the Holy Spirit? Why are people trying to work things out without the Holy Spirit? It won't work, ladies and gentlemen. The puzzle parts won't fit. You cannot put a diamond in a round hole. You cannot put a round hole in a square. Ladies and gentlemen, they won't fit. You can't force this thing to fit. You can't make it fit. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. And we have all truth from Genesis to Revelation. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm just a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal. I'm just a noisemaker. 1 Corinthians 13 lets us know that we need the Holy Spirit and we need to operate in love, in love. If you don't know how to love, repent of your sins, repent of bitterness, repent of jealousy, repent of envy, and let the Lord bless you. He will bless you. Well, we're supposed to be talking about what happens when you speak in tongues, and I'll give you uh, just a little taste, and uh, we'll finish this up next week as we uh, put together uh, tongues and interpretation and round out this series. But I want you to listen carefully. What happens when you pray in tongues? Ladies and gentlemen, it's more than a one-time experience. It's more than uttering some words that you don't know once and then going off and forgetting about it. Tongues, speaking in tongues, this should be an everyday practice. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing I've discovered that happens when I can't sleep at night, I'm tossing and turning. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a good indication that it's time for me to get up out of bed, go into another room, and pray in tongues. You don't have to pray real loud. You don't have to disturb your household. But ladies and gentlemen, those times when you're restless, and I know I'm talking to some people who have experienced restlessness, get up out of bed and go and pray in tongues. How long? Pray until the joy comes. Well, how will I know when the joy comes? When your whole soul feels happy, ladies and gentlemen. You hear the laughter. You feel the joy of the Lord. doesn't have to be long. But you pray in tongues when the storms come upon your life, when troubles come. You don't know what to pray for. You don't know how to pray. Go and pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Well, first of all, receive the Holy Spirit. I speak to you today. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive by faith. Just say, I receive you. Holy Spirit, I open up my heart to you, and I receive you. And then, and then, then begin to speak in a language that you don't know of. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know the words you're saying. 
And so don't worry about it. Satan's going to try to tell you, oh, that sounds so stupid. That sounds so dumb. That doesn't even sound right. You're tripping. You're losing your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, tell Satan, get thee behind me, devil. You're just jealous. You're going to burn in hell. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to receive this gift of tongues. I'm going to learn how to pray in this prayer language. And though you only know one word, grandarate, grandarate, etatose. You don't even know what you're saying. I don't know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, but I know it's of the Lord. When, when you let the Holy Spirit speak to you, and he knows what the next syllable is going to be, and you begin practicing. This is a faith walk, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't teach you this in the Baptist church. They didn't teach you this in the Methodist church. They didn't teach you this in the Catholic church. They didn't teach you this in, 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 in the in, in the Pentecostal church, ladies and gentlemen, in the Pentecostal church, all they taught you how to do was say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus a million times, and miracles are supposed to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given you your own prayer language. You can hear the syllables. You might hear one sound, two sounds. Put them together. Speak them. And he's not going to force you to say anything. The Holy Ghost will not force you to talk. He's going to wait on you. You must do the talking. The Holy Ghost will bring forth the words, but you must do the talking. When you hear a sound, don't worry about it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to analyze it. Just speak it. Grata sato. Etatate. Yetonata. I don't know what I'm saying, but ladies and gentlemen, I can ask the Holy Ghost, give me the gift of interpretation, and he will tell me. He will say, he will tell me. And I just said, oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I really love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. You just speak the words that the Holy Ghost will give you, and then those syllables become sentences, and those sentences become paragraphs, and those paragraphs become a monologue to God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit will speak to God on your behalf, but he wants to speak through your voice. The gift of tongues is the Holy Ghost speaking to God on your behalf for your edification. If you're tired, you're beaten, you're, you're, you're frustrated, you're sick, you want to break through, ladies and gentlemen, nothing's happening. <clears throat> happening the medication isn't doing it the doctor's visits are not doing it ladies and gentlemen you want to break through you want to break through through that pain you want to break through in your marriage you want to break through in the relationships you want to break through for your children you want to break through for the president you want to break through for the nation then you pray in tongues pray in tongues pray without ceasing pray in tongues ladies and gentlemen when you let the holy spirit pray through you on behalf of yourself on behalf of others ladies and gentlemen tongues is the gift of you speaking directly to God directly ladies and gentlemen you don't have to go through a middleman you don't have to go through sprint you don't have to go through Verizon you don't have to go through the internet you don't have to go through twit Twitter you don't have to go through Facebook ladies and gentlemen you don't have to uh, 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 go online uh, uh, you don't have to upgrade you don't have to upload or download when you speak in tongues the Holy Ghost speaks directly to God look at Romans chapter 8 look what Romans chapter 8 says verses 26 through 28 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're praying in tongues, you don't know what you're praying about. But you're praying in faith. You're letting the Holy Ghost use your voice by faith to reach God. And he's speaking directly to God on your behalf. You might be praying for someone way over in Egypt. You might be praying for someone down in Brazil. You might be praying for the President of the United States. You just pray. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. You open your mouth and begin uh, speaking the words that flow. You don't know what the next syllable is going to be. But by faith, allow the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, you're talking about a world changer. You're talking about a situation changer. You're talking about a shut down Satan situation. You're talking about victory over sin. You're talking about victory over a heal, a victory over sickness. You're talking about miracle healing. Ladies and gentlemen, you want a miracle? Begin praying in tongues. You want to sleep at night? At night, 
you begin praying in tongues. When you get restless, when you wake up, when you're looking at the ceiling, when you don't know what to do, get up and pray in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, that might be your call from God to pray for someone in England, someone in Afghanistan, someone in Sweden. Ladies and gentlemen, the gift of tongues is one of the most powerful uh, gifts that God has ever given to his people. The scripture says, likewise, the Spirit helps, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You hear the Holy Spirit groaning. Groan, ba, da, da, on, da. Mm, ba, mm. Sometimes it's just, mm, mm. and then when you begin allowing the Holy Spirit to use your voice, he will break forth like rivers of living water, and words will flow out of your mouth. These are words going directly to God from the Spirit. Listen to this. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. God searches your heart. He knows your heart is pure to him. God knows you want him with all your might. And, and the Holy Spirit, God knows the mind of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, do not embarrass the Holy Spirit or deny him. He's the mind of Christ. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You don't know more than the Holy Spirit, so allow the Holy Spirit, who is the mind of Christ, the mind of God, to pray to God through you. Praise God. You will see miracles, ladies and gentlemen, because the, in, because the Holy Spirit, verse 27, Romans 8, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit prays through you according to God's will. Ladies and gentlemen, don't deny the Holy Spirit access to use your tongue, your gift. Do not deny him the access uh, to, to let you speak in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, don't believe all those falsehoods that have been Satan has used in the church. Satan wants people to deny the Holy Spirit. Satan hates tongues. He hates tongues, ladies and gentlemen. Scripture says, verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, praying in tongues, number one, gives you supernatural understanding of God's mysteries. Number two, praying in tongues grants you access to other revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you also join up with the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, you join up with the gift of miracles, the gift of healings. When you pray in tongues, when your body, when the doctor uh, gives you medication, your body's not responding, you pray in tongues. You keep praying in tongues. Every day you're praying in tongues. You will get the breakthrough. I guarantee you, in the name of Jesus, I guarantee you, you will get the breakthrough. Use what God has given you. Number three, praying in tongues opens up the Bible in a new living way as you read it. Ladies and gentlemen, just take 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Read it. Read it several times. Then pray in tongues over. And God will give you an interpretation. He will reveal to you those scriptures. He will tell you how much he loves you. He will tell you that it's not your own power, your might, your own will that gets you uh, to the top. He would tell you that the Spirit gives you revelation. He would talk to you about love. He would talk to you about charity. He would talk to you about the wonderful things he wants to do. That's just one verse, ladies and gentlemen. When you look at all Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, when you read all Scripture and you get bound up in the Scripture, get confused, don't understand what it means, then pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Ask the Lord to give you enlightenment, to unfold the scripture, to unveil, unveil the scripture, to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Tongues does that, ladies and gentlemen. Some other things that we learn from the gift of tongues. Praying in tongues, when you pray, you're speaking directly to God. Ladies and gentlemen, we mentioned this several times, but you're speaking directly to God. Praying in tongues is for your own personal edification 
He will build you up. It's like lifting weights. It's like running in place. It's like jogging. It's like running a marathon. It's like eating right, taking the right vitamins. It's keeping your body, your mind, your spirit in good condition, praying in tongues. You're doing all this. You're edifying yourself. You're building up yourself. The scripture says in Jude, uh, the 20th verse of the uh, one chapter book of Jude, that we're to build ourselves up in the most Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the key to building yourself up. That's the key to getting healed. That's the key, Lord, uh, that God has given us. Ladies and gentlemen, don't just sit on this gift. Activate it. Use it. Praying in tongues empowers you to engage in spiritual warfare from the position of victory. Ladies and gentlemen, when you pray in tongues, you're engaging the devil in spiritual warfare. You're wrestling against principalities, powers, demonic spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And when you pray in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, you are pulling strongholds down that have gripped this nation or your nation. When you pray in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, you are rendering powerless the demon Satan is assigned against your family, against your church, against your government. When you pray in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, you are binding the enemy. You are releasing the captives. You are praying for people whom all over the world whom you may never meet. You will never know. But when you pray in tongues, amazing things happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stop being so selfish and pray in tongues and use this gift to liberate people, even people we don't even know. Liberate governments. Liberate this nation. Get guidance and get uh, righteousness into the nation. All these things happen. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you're having trouble in your marriage. You can't see eye to eye with your spouse. You're on the verge and brink of divorce. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Move over. Let the Holy Ghost uh, take over. You may say, well, I don't want him and I don't want her, so I'm not going to pray in tongues. Well, that's selfish, and the Lord's going to rebuke you for that. The Lord will rebuke you. Why will you deny the power of God that God has sent to help you to be victorious? Ladies and gentlemen, praying in tongues gives you the vantage point of victory. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several more reasons why we ought to pray in tongues. I will continue those next week. I will continue those Next week, praise God, I've given you several already. Uh, we're gonna, uh, it's going to get even gooder and gooder next week as we look at the rest of this list and things that happen when we pray in tongues. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we'll conclude uh, this series on the gift of tongues as we look at part three and add to the gift of tongues the gift of interpretation. Praise God. I hope this message has helped you. I hope this message has helped you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these messages will be available. Uh, available. I can send you. Uh, if you email me, I'll send you the message. Or I'll send you um, the link to my uh, YouTube website. And when you go on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube site so that when we produce these messages, they come automatically to your cell phone or to your email. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to say uh, uh, close out on this message, but I want you to stay on. I want you to stay on because we want to pray. The anointing is upon us to pray for you, to pray for you. Whatever your situation is, we want to pray for you. Those of you who are listening from other uh, nations, listening to the tape, uh, praise God. If, if there's a prayer request, you can call me at 404-205-1101, or you can send me an email and contact me. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are listening, uh, if you want a personal appointment with me, we can set up a personal appointment where we can minister to you on a one-on-one -on, -one on this website without anyone else interfering, without anyone knowing what your situation is. Just contact me. Say, Pastor, I want to make a personal appointment with you. I need healing. I need prayer. I need deliverance. 
I need help from my marriage. Jackie and I, we will uh, meet with you. Uh, if, if it's a situation that a woman ought to handle, I will ask my wife Jackie to minister to you. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. God has opened the door. So as we close out uh, this message, we're going to stay in prayer. We want you to stay online and let's pray together.